We can classify river systems in a number of ways. Let's start with this though, the fourth word you see on the screen, streams. In fluvial geomorphology, we are more likely to use the term stream than we are river. They're used interchangeably, but stream is a very common way to describe runoff, flowing water. Now, of course, there are a lot of words that describe running water, river, stream, creek, creek, run. But in fluvial geomorphology, the word stream gets used at least as frequently as the word river. That means the Mississippi is really a stream system from, from a fluvial geomorphological standpoint. First, let's start with this. There's two quick and easy ways to describe a river system or a stream system. And that is as an intermittent stream or a perennial stream. On the left-hand side, you can see the Mojave River. Take a look at that. I don't even need to be looking at you or talking to you for you to be able to look down at that picture on the left-hand side and see where the river system is at. Of course, it's that light brown streak that goes from the bottom left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner of that slide, of that photograph. I took this picture from the air, of course. When you look at that, you can see that obviously, occasionally water must flow there. Well, the hallmark of an intermittent stream is just that that intermittent streams do not have a stream flow throughout the year. In other words, there are periods of time when they're dry. And intermittent streams really only flow after a storm. Of course, the Mojave River is in the Mojave Desert where there is not a lot of precipitation. But compound this out with storms over hundreds and then thousands and tens of thousands of years, and what do you get? You get a stream system, and there it is. This is actually one of the ways that when we look at Mars, for example, that we determined that there had been rivers on Mars at one point. On the right-hand side, that's the Fox River in Northern Illinois, very near where I used to live, which is that town that you can see up at the top of that picture, Lake in the Hills, also known as Algonquin. That type of river system is a perennial stream. Perennial streams mean, means that they flow year round. There's never a moment when they go dry. Now, they may have decreased discharge during the dry season, but they always have water flowing through the channel. Of course, a river like the Mississippi is a perennial stream. So if you look on the left-hand side, that's Cairo in Egypt. You can see a branch of the Nile. If you look off in the distance, you can see there's a bridge. If you cross over that bridge to the right, you go onto an island, and then you can see the dotted lights that show where that road goes. And then just beyond that tall building, it crosses over another branch of the Nile because this is an, uh, an island sitting there in the middle of the river. And then on the right-hand side, you can see up near Luxor where the Valley of the Kings is at, in the background, you can see what much of Egypt looks like. And in fact, 95% of the 100 million people in Egypt live on 3% of the land, which is the Nile River Valley and the Nile Delta. The reason is because there's a permanent supply of water there, which is the Nile River. To explain to you how important this particular river is, the country right next door to Egypt is more than twice the size and land area. And where Egypt has 100 million people, Libya only has 6 million people. What's the difference between these two places? The Nile. And the Nile is a type of river system that we call an exotic stream. An exotic stream is a perennial stream that flows through a desert. Obviously, it could not have begun in the desert because a desert is too dry. So exotic streams start in some other much wetter location. In the case of the Nile, it starts in Central Africa. You might recall that in Central Africa, we have the second largest tropical rainforest in the world. That means there's going to be a lot of precipitation. That precipitation comes from the equatorial low pressure system, where you have converging rising air making clouds. Furthermore, because it's hot, you have hot rising air. And remember, hot air holds more water. And so there's a distinct, very wet season in that part of the world. And the four major rivers of Africa, the Zambezi, the Congo, the Niger or Niger, and the Nile drain all of that precipitation. Well, with the Nile, it flows north through the Sahara Desert. And of course, 
6,000 years ago, the people living in Egypt figured out the rhythm of that river, which is that every year it would flood. It doesn't do that anymore because of the dam. And it would leave behind nutrient-rich soil. And 6,000 years ago, these people began to crank their agricultural system. And of course, they began to build one of the greatest civilizations in human history. Now, we know they did this on the backs of slaves, but they also did this on an overwhelmingly vegetarian diet. One of few other exotic streams, the Indus River in Pakistan is an exotic stream. The very famous two rivers of Mesopotamia, the Tigris and the Euphrates that flow through Iraq, and the Colorado River. 